Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, this is lesson two of the year six SATs arithmetic uh, questions. Today we're going to look at all the subtraction types of questions that are on the paper. These questions have come from the 2022 paper and I'm going to talk through the different methods that we teach in school to solve these problems. So our first question um, and the first sort of question on the arithmetic paper of subtraction is number nine, 7,306 subtract 1,847. So we would ask the children for this question just to use the basic column method. So I'm placing the, the largest number on top, so 7,306. And I'm going to place the smaller number underneath 1,847. Okay. Now, when they're solving this, they would use the squared box here to do their working out. But I'm just going to show you on the side here because it's a bit larger. So first of all, six take away seven, we cannot do. So we have to borrow. We can't borrow from zero because that is also smaller than four. And we can't borrow from three because that is also smaller than eight. So we borrow from the seven. So when I cross seven out, that becomes six. That becomes 13, which I cross out and make 12. That becomes 10 which I could then cross out and becomes nine. And finally, that becomes 16. So 16 take away seven is going to be nine. Nine take away four is going to be five. And 12 take away eight is going to be four. And finally, 6,000 take away 1,000 is gonna be 5,000 leaving us with a final answer of 5,459. And just like with the addition, the children must write the correct answer in the box provided in order to get and secure the mark. So first question, 5,459. Okay, next subtraction question. So the next question we're looking at So the next question we're looking at is 500,000 take away 5,000. Now for this question, a lot of children might do the column method, might use the column method. However, they could also use some of their known facts. So for example, if we um, take away 1,000 from this, let's get rid of these zeros here. What we're actually looking at is 500 take away 5. Okay, so we've just got 500 here and we've got 5 here. So with because these numbers are large, it, it might prompt the children to, to go for the column method, but it's not necessarily the quickest and most efficient method. Um, so like I said, if you get rid of these three zeros, these three zeros, get rid of the thousands, and let's deal with 500 take away 5. Now if I do 500 take away 5, okay, 500 take away 5, for most children in year 6, it's just a case of counting back which gives us 495. But remembering that we took away the three thousand, the, the thousands here and the thousands here, we will have to add those thousands back to our answer at the end. So we're left with a final answer of 4,900, sorry, 495,000, okay, which would give us our final answer. Now, if you were to do that in, using the column method, you would still get the same answer. Um, but like I said, sometimes it's not always the fastest or most efficient method. And the children only have about 30 minutes to complete this paper. So sometimes with some of the questions, you need to be thinking and explain to the children what's the most efficient method. Okay, making sure they write the answer in the box provided. Okay, so 495,000. Right, next question. So the next question I've chosen is subtraction, but using decimals. This is a type of question that trips a lot of children up. And the reason is, is because we do have one decimal number, but we're also taking away from a whole number. So it's eight subtract 5.123. Now, the one thing to remember with this type of question is placeholders, placeholders, placeholders. So if, if I start off like I would with any decimal question, 
I say to the children, take it in steps. Let's write down the whole numbers first. So we've got eight and we've got five. So we write down the whole numbers first, un one underneath the other. That's very important. So there's our ones. Now we're going to put our decimal points in. Now, there is no decimal point next to the eight, but there will be one. So I'm going to put a decimal point there and I'm going to put a decimal point there. Line them up like buttons on a shirt. And that's what I always say to the children. Then um, we're going to put the one here, 5.123 to show our decimals. And this is the key part now. The children must put zeros in as their placeholders, okay? So that shows them when they're solving this that they cannot take three from zero, two from zero, one from zero. They're going to have to borrow. Once they have the numbers all lined up, then it's very difficult for them to get the wrong answer from this point. OK, but the mistakes that children will often make is put the five underneath the eight under over the one and they'll put the numbers in the wrong places. OK, so getting the numbers lined up is the first step. Three take away zero can't do two take away from zero. One take away zero can't do. So I'm going to borrow seven. Be eight becomes seven. Ten becomes nine. Ten becomes nine. Leaving us with ten take away three. Ten take away three is seven. 9 take away 2 is 7, 9 take away 1 is 8, 7 take away 5 is 2. But don't forget to line the decimal points up. So you've got 2.877, okay? Leaving us with that final answer and making sure when we've done that, we write the correct answer in the box provided, 2.877. Seven, But like I say, with these decimal questions, the hardest step is getting those numbers lined up. Once they're lined up, it's just a simple subtraction. Also, remember to put your decimal point in. If you write 2,877, if the decimal point's not there, that's not a correct answer. So remember those decimal points, guys. Okay, so similar question to the last one, except this one, they're trying to throw the children off by giving them an even larger number. This time, the whole number we're subtracting from is 26. Same process, though. OK, so we're going to put 20. Um, we've got no tens to speak of here. So we're going to put six. And then the numbers must line up. Now, again, they've got another number to deal with. So where does the two go? Well, the two is in the ones column, so it must go underneath the six. OK, if they want to put the names of the columns above, they can do so to show that that's the tens and that's the ones. But just as long as they line the numbers up correctly. Decimal points, again, one underneath the other, like buttons on a shirt. And then we're going to put the decimal numbers in. So no decimals for 26 at the moment. We've got zero, we've got one, and we've got two. Okay. Most important step, put your placeholders in. So zero, zero, zero. We have nothing here. Okay, so we're going to put those zeros in. Now, once again, it's a simple subtraction. So zero take away two is two. Oh no, we can't do that. So that's another mistake that children might make. We can't do zero take away two. So we're gonna do borrow, can't borrow from there, borrow, can't borrow from there. So we're gonna go over here to the six. We can borrow from the six because it's larger than two. So I'm gonna take from the six, that becomes five. That becomes 10, but I'm gonna cross that out and make it nine. That becomes 10, but I'm going to cross that out and make that 9 because I'm borrowing again. And finally, that becomes 10. 10 take away 2 is 8. 9 take away 1 is 8. 9 take away 0 is going to be 9. And then we've got 5 take away 2 is 3. And 2 take away 0 is 2. Remembering once again, the decimal points must line up. So decimal point, decimal point is going to go here. Leaving us with a final answer of 23.988. And once again, reminding the children to write that answer in the box and remembering to put in that decimal point. The things like forgetting decimal points, okay, and not writing your answer in the box. It's a real shame when children get those answers wrong because they're just careless mistakes and they've done all the maths correct. So to miss things out like that, I just try to get the children out of those kind of 
those uh, bad habits, okay? Because it's a real shame when they've done the maths, but they still don't get the answer correct. Okay, so that was my last subtraction question. Only a short video today. I hope that you found it useful. Please join me in the next video, which will be about all the multiplication questions. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.